This conference will now be recorded. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so the session is being recorded now. Um, so um, today uh, we are joined by Jana Tubush. Please correct me if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Um, she is a research data management specialist from University of Amsterdam, and uh, she will talk to us about how they go about using DMP online and um, doing the data management plans. And then we will go through several updates um, with Sarah. And let me just see the agenda. I will have a space for you to ask questions, um, but also feel free to um, either just join the call when you unmute yourself, when you want to speak, or feel free to also um, write in the chat. And um, at the end of it, we'll just wrap up and tell you when our next drop-in meeting is. So if that's okay, I'll just give a space now to Jana to talk. Yes, uh, hi everyone. Um, my name is Jana Tubos. Um, that's how you pronounce my last name. Um, and yes, I'm an RDM specialist uh, actually for uh, two universities. Our RDM support is connected to uh, both the University of Amsterdam and uh, Amsterdam University of Applied, uh, Applied Sciences. And uh, we've been providing DMP online uh, since last year for both our universities. And uh, so far, it's been definitely an improvement compared to before. We did already have our own data management plan templates, uh, one for each university. And they were very similar, just with some small differences. Um, but we use Word documents for that. And that made sharing plans and things like version control, um, storing the plans, etc. But it's difficult for researchers. And these things are now a lot easier to do in DMP online. So for us, that was definitely a reason to um, decide to start using the tool. And also for us, um, since we're in the Netherlands, uh, we, uh, for, for us, it was also another reason that several of the main funders for Dutch researchers um, they either already provided their template in DMP Online or they were planning to. So it will make it easier for our researchers to have all our templates or all the DMP templates that they needed or most of them in one place. Um, it just made it more convenient for them if we would also add our own templates to the same place. Um, so during the implementation of DMP Online, uh, last year, we also used that as an opportunity to update our templates because they were already a few years old and we had gotten some feedback as well from researchers that they were not always that easy to use. Um, so we decided to scrap some of the questions, um, rewrite some of them and uh, make sure that they were all up to date uh, regarding things like, for example, the GDPR. And um, we already had our own guidance for the old templates, so we updated and we wrote that as well. Uh, we don't use the DCC guidance, not because we don't think it's good enough, but um, because we wanted to provide information specific to our universities and um, provide links to, for example, our RDM websites and other forms of support that a researcher might need. Um, for example, something like legal support. So we want to make sure that it was easy for our researchers to uh, find the information next to the question. Um, and now we have uh, one general template for the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences and one general template for the University of Amsterdam that's similar to the old situation. Uh, what's new is that we also now have uh, one that's specific to the social science faculty of the UFA because they ask us uh, to create uh, their own template for them, which means that instead of two, we now provide three templates in total. And um, so, yeah, we've been using the B online for about a year now, and for the future, we plan to add some of our own guidance to relevant funder templates 
So again, researchers can find uh, easily find the information they need um, uh, that's relevant for them. Um, and also look at some of the newer options in DMP Online, for example, the conditional questions options. Um, we just want to have a look at them, see if maybe uh, we could use that to improve our templates. And I think that was uh, kind of a short summary of why we uh, decided to start using DMP Online and our experiences so far. Um, unfortunately, our experience have been positive overall, so. Yeah, we're very happy with uh, having made the switch to using this tool. So well, yeah, that was me. Much, thank you very much. I think that's very okay. interesting. Um, I'm not sure whether there is um, someone having a question. Uh, feel free to ask any question, Yana, either now or throughout um, our discussion as we go on, or feel free to also drop anything in the chat. Yeah, if anyone has a question now, then feel free uh, to, to ask it and uh, I'll stick around if uh, any questions come up later. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Thanks, Jana. Okay, then. Um, so if no one is having any question just now, um, as I said, feel free to ask at any point or just um, drop the question into the chat and in the meantime we can just continue with um, the updates. I actually have one quick one if we can fit oh, yeah. in. Um, oh, yeah. So I was intrigued by what you said about the social science template um, Yes. and the fact that you've now this is like a third one you've added on and I wondered to what extent the you know either your school or department I'm not sure how the structure works at um, Amsterdam how much they've kind of led on that like do you have a data steward in that area who's kind of leading that work or or are they just um collaborating with you at like the central service level yeah they're definitely since we are the one um building the templates and providing the templates they've definitely collaborated with us however they're uh, faculty data stewards um and some other people um uh, that work with the data stewards they were the ones that came to us with the question saying look we've noticed that uh, the template the general template doesn't quite fit uh, our needs um, so uh, together um, with them we had to look at our general template and based on that we modified it and then uh, use that as a basis to create a new template for them so it was more of a collaboration um, but the but the question came, de came definitely from the department itself, from the faculty itself. Right. Yeah, I think it's it's nice if you're seeing that response from the different user communities to do something more tailored. Yeah, that's um, so far other faculties don't really seem to have the need for that. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the social science faculty, um, because they also have, um, so, so much to do with like the ethical commission and so on basically all their research has to be approved by an ethical commission so they they, they have uh, yeah a kind, a kind of different position and therefore also different needs so um, I wasn't surprised that they came with this question to us mm -hmm. um, but it seems that um, so far the general templates are fine for the other faculties okay excellent Okay then. Um, so as I said again, if you have any more questions for Yana, um, feel free to ask her at any point or just um, drop the question into the chat and we can just continue with a few, few more updates. So um, the September newsletter was out. I'm not sure what you managed to already see that. Um, if not, I'm just sharing the link in the chat for you if you want to have a look. And also if you are not subscribed, there is a link to follow as well so you will not miss any of the future issues in the future um i think an interesting thing from the newsletter i can actually share my screen maybe just to show you or uh, let's see start sharing my screen uh let's see 
just so I can show you the newsletter very quickly. I won't go through the details. Um, ah, is it working now? I think you, you should be able to see it now. Okay, so this was the September newsletter. Um, this is the format we do. And so we just summarized our September drop-in session. And as I said before, if you missed this, um, we always provide the links for you to listen um, to the drop-in session. We were joined actually by last month by Helen Porter from London School of Economics, who was also talking how they go about using GMP online. So um, if you're interested in that, definitely follow this link. And then um, last month we were um, having a user group at London School of Economics. So um, Sarah had put together a summary um, of all the points that were discussed about where we will go next. and which features are we planning to work on, as well as I just summarized um, that this time our group was really interesting because we're joined by institutions from UK, Sweden, Finland and Netherlands. So the discussions were really interesting and it was nice just to have such a variety of people um, working all together. And um, last month uh, we were sharing a story from Maastricht University from Miriam. So again, if you follow this link, you'll be able to read um, more from Miriam. And every month we are sharing uh, a how-to video. And um, this month we are showing you a demo on how to create conditional questions. Um, I just recorded this demo during one of our calls with our interns. So um, we, we talk about loads of different things during um, this uh, video as well, but I'll be putting um, you know, a more focused video together down the line. I just didn't have the time, uh, but I thought it'll be worth sharing this video with you just so you can see this new exciting functionality. And at the end, as always, we're just sharing um, the days to remember for you. So the days for the following drop-in uh, meetings as well. It's just announcing that um, in January, we'll, um, we were offered um, a space at Delft University, and we'll be having a DMP online music group um, so if you want to register, um, again, feel free to get in touch with us so we know um, who will be coming. Uh, I can just see in the chat, David is saying that links takes me to the MailChimp login page. Ah, okay. And Sarah is just probably trying to find the right link. Okay, then. Um, so I'll just stop sharing my screen here, I think. And let me go back to the agenda. Um, Again, um, I mentioned we have the last recording from September DMP online drop-in session now live on YouTube. So I'll just share the link here with you uh, in the chat. And I think I can just give the space now to Sarah who will update you a little bit more on other things. Uh, yeah, sure. So I'll just, um, oh, do you want to give me controls and I'll just show the agenda and then I can follow through any links if, if needed. The, the two main things I thought it was worth updating on are um, the RDA, the Research Data Alliance. Uh, so here we go. Hopefully you can now see the, the agenda. Um, there was a plenary in Helsinki last week um, and we had a couple of sessions on data management plans. Um, there was one in the data management, uh, the Active DMP's interest group um, in which Sam and Maria both spoke. Um, so I'll point you through to this. I don't think the slides are actually on there yet, so we'll make sure they're on there today. Um, but what, uh, what Maria spoke about was the work they've been doing to make data management plans more findable. So they um, collaborate with DataSite over in the States and they're doing some pilot work as part of a, an NSF eager grant where they're assigning a DOI to data management plans and having a landing page for the DMP. And then they're trialing um, with a set of DMPs they have, um, I think they're NSF funded ones, they're doing a match between the NSF grants database so they can pull in the award information. And this is really like a first test case of showing how we could integrate with other systems to pull in information and update the DMP um, and then feed that information back into the tools. Um, and then Sam also spoke about how we've been mapping to the new um, new standard that's come out through RDA for data management plans. We've essentially been um, mapping our data model to that and we've also been looking at the themes that we use to see whether we can make some changes to that so it's easier um, 
to to match the information because some of our themes um, are either more granular or or less granular depending on on which ones are covered. So um, Sam's also done some work extending the API, which I think has been, as some of you may have seen that at the user group session. Um, that's also a way that you're able to pull information out um, of the different plans because you, you know what your specific questions are if you've set questions in your own template or on the custom templates. The, I'll just go back to the other thing um, I wanted to flag about that RDA session is that there's a new working group that's being set up. There was a lady called Daniela Hausen who was in the session who was interested in disciplinary data management plans. So she'd been doing some work in engineering, um, developing domain specific guidance. And then the, a group of people at that session, Magdalena, do you mind muting? I think we get a little bit of feedback because we're in the same room. Um, so in that session, there were, I think, four or five other people who joined up with her um, to start a case statement for a new group looking at discipline or discipline specific guidance for data management plans. And I can't remember all the all the topics are getting covered, um, but definitely engineering. I think social sciences um and the arts were in there as well but that's potentially something that some of you are doing similar work and might be interested in getting involved and um we can put you in touch if so i think they've scheduled a first call to start drafting a, a case statement and then they'll they'll try and get a new group set up does anyone have questions on the rda um work or or sam would you like to say anything about the the work you've been doing on the common standard Yeah, sure. Uh, so our, our first stage of mapping is obviously uh, using the existing themes uh, like we've been doing, and then we're hoping to adjust those, but uh, we'd want to kind of communicate with everybody about how we're going to change the themes, because that was uh, that would obviously affect the uh, guidance that everyone has and the way that that's mapped currently. And uh, then kind of the next thing that we were going to do is uh, add more formatted question types, similar to the uh, metadata standards question we have where we can either pull from a controlled vocabulary or just define uh, something like the costing structure so that we can have more structured data. And that'll be consumable via both our API and the uh, machine actual DMP export. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sam. Um, so if anyone has any questions, by all means speak out or, or pop them in the chat and we can explain a bit more about that. Um, the only other thing I was going to talk about here is the um, Amazon Web Services. So we'd sent, we'd mentioned about this in in some sessions, and we've blogged, but we've had um, a few queries coming to the help desk. Um, so I wanted to explain um, what we've been thinking about in terms of Amazon. So before, um, like a, a couple of months ago, we thought that Amazon Web Services would be um, something we'd need to do for overseas customers so that we could ensure the data remained in, in the EEA. So we'd started thinking about how we could move to Amazon so that the, you know, depending on what happens with, with Brexit, um, so that we knew the data would still be in the European economic area. Um, and then actually having spoken with uh, the lawyer, we found that, we would be classed as a third party processor if the data was stored on Amazon because we're still in the UK. Um, so there are some model clauses which we can sign with any overseas customers. Um, so we don't, we found subsequently that we don't actually need to move to, to Amazon as a fix to, to Brexit. But we had also thought it's worth having that as an option anyhow. Um, so it makes it easier um, in terms of hosting and, and controlling um, deployments, because at the moment we work through um, essentially through a third party. We've been um, working with Adina at Edinburgh University. So even if we don't move to Amazon, I think we will probably um, switch our local setup so that we're liaising directly with IT services rather than going through Adena as a third party for, for the local hosting. Um, so we put out uh, a kind of consent form questionnaire to ask people if they're happy for us to, to host via Amazon. And I think about a quarter of the subscribers so far have completed that and, and given permissions. So potentially um, in future, we, we may deploy to Amazon or um, we may just change our local setup at Edinburgh 
um, but obviously we'll keep you informed of, of which option we go down. Um, but I just wanted to raise this because I know there'd been some questions um, via the help desk just about how this changes terms and conditions and any um, access to the data. So I don't know if anyone on the call has specific questions they'd like to raise about about Amazon. Um, I mean, obviously, if people yeah. are uncomfortable. We're we're happy to not move to Amazon. We don't need to do um, don't need to do that switch. Joachim. Yeah, um, I was just thinking. Uh, I'm not a lawyer and not a specialist, but I, I know that. You know that uh, in the U.S. they took the Cloud Act last last year during Trump. Uh, there was this court case uh, up in the Supreme Court in, in the U.S. where someone wanted to get data from Microsoft's uh, server on Ireland, which was an Amazon server, and uh, Microsoft refused. And in response to that. Uh, the U.S. took the Cloud Act, which, uh, as I understand it, uh, states that uh, if uh, an American company has a server, even in uh, in the EU, they can, uh, on suspicion of uh, some some kind of uh, crime or, or or fraud or, or they can get a, a search warrant and can get this the data. Uh, delivered from any American company, even if the server is overseas in, in the EU. So, so I, I, I was just wondering how how this would play out here. Uh, I mean, we we'll have to be sure that uh, obviously we don't want our users to put that kind of <laughs> uh, sensitive uh, data or, or personal data in the DMPs, but uh, in case uh, we would fail to to properly monitor that, uh, uh, how would this potentially play out? Yeah, no, no, it's definitely a good question. Um, and one of the one of the things we've been asked about is, you know, whether where the data would be hosted, and it would mm -hmm. certainly be within the EA, but. But yeah, there's then still, um, I guess, certain risks because it is a overseas company. Um, yeah, the the more the more we think about Amazon, the more kind of um, more it's a can of worms. And and my hunch is that we probably won't go down that route. We'll continue with Edinburgh hosting because um, mm. we found that Amazon isn't the fix to Brexit, which we we thought it would be initially, yeah. um, and we can still reassure overseas customers that you know we're held to the same gdpr regulations and mm. um yeah. meet all the requirements you would need even though the data is not technically stored in the eea um mm. you know once once we're kind of classed as a separate country um or maybe scotland will <laughs> we'll go stay. we'll go independent and we'll we'll become part of europe again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah we'll see. yeah definitely but no thank you for raising that one that yeah. that's okay. i wasn't aware of that case um mm -hmm. and i mean with the with the um initial like agreement we have with them i as far as i'm aware I'm, we've been consulting with the lawyers on this because we've had a question about whether um amazon would have access you know to the data within the system and i i don't think so because the agreements with us not with all of the um, individual users so the terms and conditions um, that we have on the tool are still what apply rather than um, Amazon's terms and conditions for, for access um, but we will check all these details before we'd make any decision to to move to Amazon but as I say it's it, I think it's more likely that that's a a secondary fallback um, if there were any other issues rather than remaining in Edinburgh. Thank you. Any other questions ar around that aspect? No? 
so the only other thing we have on the agenda is just any um, kind of q and A. I I don't know if there's questions that have arisen in the last month or things you'd like to um, pick up on, ideas to suggest. <laughs> it's, it's it's fine if not. Okay. Um, so if no one is having any questions now, um, feel free to always get in touch with us at the help desk at DMC online at dcc.ac.uk. Um, the questions can always just come up later, so it's fine. Nothing is coming up. Um, so I believe I could just wrap up slowly. Um, so if you're not following us on social media, I would just suggest you to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and subscribe to our monthly newsletter. Um, again, these links are um, shared in the agenda. So if you if you go into the agenda in the chat, uh, you'll be able to follow our links. Um, we do have our next drop-in meeting on the 27th of November at half past 10 UK time. And I'm just Can everyone still hear Magdalena? No, oh, okay. So um, I think the audio dropped. I can hear her because we're in the same room. Um, so she was just um, mentioning about when the next drop in is, which let me just open the agenda. Um, next drop in is 27th of November. Um, we'll just pop the link in the chat. Um, and um, I'm not sure if we've got somebody arranged to do the kind of info on how they're like the, the knowledge exchange case study. Not yet. OK, so we, we will arrange one and let you know who that will be um, and give some general updates as well. If there's anything else you want to see in these sessions, um, do let us know because we're happy to do whatever format works best for you. Um, that's the link for, for next time for 27th of November. Um, and if anything would, else comes up in the sorry. meantime, sorry, uh, Joachim. Yeah, I, I was just wondering about this September newsletter link that uh, will it be changed to yes we'll or... change the link um i don't i couldn't find the right link but magdalena okay. will paste the right link into this agenda and then you'll get that and we'll also okay. make sure we put the presentation slides from rda up there was a, right. a nice demo from um uh from maria where she essentially created a video showing the work that they've got kind of planned um so we'll we'll point you to that Great, thank you. Excellent, okay. Well, thank you all for joining. And if you have any questions in the interim, just um, drop us a line. And uh, and thank you very much to you. <laughs> thank you very much to Jana as well, <laughs> obviously, for, for oh. giving us the, the update from Amsterdam. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. okay, well, we'll speak yeah. to you all soon. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.